right, so we've talked extensively about Microsoft. Let's focus on the other program we're going to talk a lot about, which is X-Plane 12, the newest addition to the flight sim community. Uh, whereas Microsoft might have focused more on the outside, the, the views, the landscape of where you're flying, X-Plane really takes us inside the aircraft and focuses on a lot of those aerodynamic specific indications. And what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you, you own an aircraft, you know its performance standards on a standard day, you jump in a digital version of that in X-Plane 12, and it's gonna be very close to what you expect based off your weight and balance, uh, barometric pressure, altitude, all things accounted for. X-Plane 12 is a great program for uh, digital pilots to see what they expect in the aircraft. Another thing about X-Plane that I recognize is um, approaches programmed into your avionics. They went really deep into making sure everything is accurate to what you'd expect. My canary in the coal mine is uh, maybe picking out a lesser known initial approach fix for an approach you fly a lot. You'll find it in X-Plane 12, whereas other SIM programs, you may not. So I think they really focus on that detail. And I think that speaks a lot to the program as a whole. But as mentioned, it is a very accurate, uh, high responsive flight sim. And there are a lot of blogs written by the team over at X-Plane 12 that get into all the focus they put into uh, all the aerodynamics, all the weather engines, everything above. Um, they really got into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, here is the homepage for X-Plane 12. For anyone who's used X-Plane 11, you'll see the uh, immediate difference. Uh, X-Plane 11 had a couple blue bars and a blue screen. They now increase the user interface with uh, a nice little aircraft ready to take off. And then we've got our five um, visual cues as to different segments. We've got resume last flight, which is pretty self-explanatory. We can go ahead and start fresh with a new flight. We can load a flight we really enjoyed and saved in the program, which is uh, very easy to do. We also have a flight school with X-Plane and then the internal settings. So let's jump into a new flight. If you just loaded the program and you want to go fly, here I have a Cessna 172 chosen. You'll see uh, on the top right, I'm able to go ahead and type in what aircraft I'd like to go to. Of course, I'm going to start at India 69er or Claremont County Airport. I can choose that airport and it'll give me a little diagram of where I am starting, uh, what pieces of the airport I need to be aware of, things of that sort. I can quickly change which runway I'm on by either clicking on the map or on the left side, you'll see the runways um, options. Another thing I like about Explain 12 is uh, just as I have the option to start on the runway, I can start on a three nautical mile approach or a 10 nautical mile approach to runway 22 in this scenario. I like that because if you really want to critique landings, you want to practice crosswind approaches, you want to maybe throw in some bad weather and, and try some instrument approaches, you have the ability to quickly load on a three mile final or a 10 mile final for this runway. Now, again, it is a little bit of cheating because you are on center line when you start the maneuver. Uh, but it is a unique way to quickly practice a lot of approaches in a short amount of time. Let's talk about weather in X-Plane 12. So with X-Plane 12, back to my uh, aircraft selection page on the middle of the image to the right, you'll see weather. There is a little sliding bar we can move, which will take it from clear all the way up to overcast or thunderstorms. Uh, but we can also customize it. So here we have uh, looking at the view, this is a clear day, so there's nothing out there. We have some pre-configured settings. We have VFR, uh, we have VFR broken. We have uh, cumulonimbus, some IFR situations. A lot we can pre-program. On the right side of the screen, we can get granular on atmospheric conditions. Um, we also have the option to go ahead and pre-program the live weather. So on the bottom left, you're going to see a manual slash real weather tab. And when you click on that and choose download the weather, depending on what airport you're starting at, which in this scenario is Indy 6 er it will pull from the internet what the weather settings are for your airport at that moment or maybe 15 minutes uh, situation. I think this is a really nice feature if you ever have a day where the weather wasn't helpful at your airport, you didn't want to go flying, but you wanted to see what it was like to go flying in that, 
you can easily do that in the simulator. And then back uh, when choosing time of day, uh, with seasons, you know, if you're flying in November versus July, you're going to see a difference in how the trees are um, presented and how uh, time of sunset, time of sunrise. You can even, even get into where the sun is in the sky as well as at nighttime where stars are in the sky. So a really big step towards realism when it comes to those things. Uh, X-Plane, as mentioned, they do offer that flight school. In the flight school, we have the option of some VFR basics, uh, tail dragger introduction, landing uh, in a 172, and they're all graded also. We additionally have some navigation. So VOR navigation or uh, the flying and ILS approach are some great options to critique your ability in the simulator. And then of course, something I know nothing about, helicopter basics is an option in X-Plane 12, which does and has had helicopters in the past, worth mentioning. So let's look at X-Plane's computing requirements. I tried to make this graph as similar to the previous one we saw in Microsoft, which goes to show uh, Windows 10 or 11 is supported uh, for CPU uh, middle tier settings, either an Intel i3 or Intel i5 for your graphics uh, processor or GPU. It is worth mentioning, as you'll see at the bottom, the asterisk, Intel GPUs are not supported by X-Plane 12. So worth mentioning, worth highlighting. Uh, VRAM, RAM, those are about, where'd you expect 8 gigabytes to 24 for the really high performing PC. And then storage, as I mentioned with Microsoft, they recommend 150, X-Plane 12 is only at about 25. So for the native starting version of X-Plane 12, you can get by with a lot lower storage than you could with Microsoft. So I like to recommend if you have got an older PC, X-Plane 12 may be the better option than Microsoft Flight Sim. Another very great piece about X-Plane 12 is it is Apple operating system compatible. So if you're like myself and you use a MacBook Pro uh, or if you've got a Mac desktop, it will work with X-Plane 12. And also you get a free version to test before you buy. What this version does is it downloads the entire program to your PC or Apple uh, Mac desktop or desktop. Um, you fly a small portion of it in 15 minute windows. Uh, and it basically tests out A, whether your PC can handle the program and B, if it's something you're interested in. And then if you do purchase it, it basically unlocks everything that you've already installed. So I like it because you can A, get a test of what you're committing to, and then B, you can make sure your computer can run it. So that's a really unique feature of X-Plane 12. That's worth highlighting. Uh, 